I'm in the dressing room at the Kenneth Moore Theatre with the lovely Jan Hunt. <laughs> Hello, Jan. Hello, Nige. And uh, we were we were talking earlier about pantomime. What, what was your very first pantomime experiences? My very first pantomime was as um, a Graham and Nelson juvenile at the King's Theatre in Hammersmith. Um, and a friend of mine from the local dancing school I went to in Hounslow, Hounslow in Middlesex, and she was going up for the audition, and I said, oh, I do wish I could come, but I was a year younger than her, so in actual fact, I, I got in a little bit before I should have done, because so I was going to be 12 in the February, and this pantomime was like the December before that February, so I don't know how I did it, but I crept in, so I was a little juvenile, and I had, do you remember the Terry juveniles with the old Bob the Fringe and all right. that? I was a Graham and Nelson juvenile, and I had a fringe and a little bit like that. And uh, we all wore beige coats with mandarin collars, and we had the Graham and Nelson badge on the front. And we all wore red pillbox hats. I mean, they'd think, uh, you kids walking around like that, do you get taken in, wouldn't you? Uh, but there were 12 of us, so we looked like we'd all come out of a box. You know, <laughs> we were all, and we were all little. But I'll tell you what, Nigel, for we, our speciality was acrobatic. And it was Aladdin with, do you remember Joan Dowling, who sadly took her own life? I mean, I'm going back a long time. Um, Clarkson Rose, yes. Alec Plian, um, oh my God, I mean, names from the past, fantastic pantomime people. And in the cave, it was Aladdin, and in the cave we were all the jewels, and we used to do our routines for Trish Trash Polka. And when I think what we did, I mean, we were only little, I mean, I'm only five foot two now, and I think I would have been taller had I not done this acrobatic, because we did a tower with three levels of kids, and I was always on the bottom. So I think that's why I'm shorter, because I had two layers of like, other young girls on kids on top of me. But when I think now how, you know, for 11 and 12 year olds doing all those acrobatics, we called that the tower. I mean, it was amazing. So that was my first pantomime. And, and, and do, do, am I, if I got this right, did you, uh, were you actually um, then sort of snapped up for stardom as... as, as ah! As a babe in babe in the woods. Well, yes, you're absolutely right about the second bit. You're not exactly right about the first bit. I, I would love to have been snapped up as a great, huge talent, but I wasn't. The reason that I came out of the juveniles was that as much as I loved the pantomime, I never liked being one of 16. You know, I always would sort of delay my moves so that I, I suppose it's what you call pulling focus, really. I wanted to give that special, you know, so my head would incline more than anybody else's and my smile would be broader because I wanted to be a solo, really, I guess. So um, the following year, they were, they were auditioning for Babes in the Wood with Jimmy Jewell and Ben Warris, the Kings, uh, uh, the Liverpool, I think it was Liverpool, the first one, or Newcastle was it, anyway, and uh, I went up and I got the part and it was fantastic. So, so you're, you're how old at this I point? I was 12 then. 12, 12 yes. And you go away from home? Away from home, so yes. What, what happened away about? from home and pantomimes in those days, like around 16, 20 weeks, had to have a chaperone who got very drunk. She was like the woman from, oh dear, you'll remember because you're fantastic at names. What's that fantastic film where the woman goes, my hat, my bloody hat, oh, I'll think of, uh, Rona, no, Ro oh dear, I should have got this name right, I can't remember, what's my name, Jan, <laughs> um, I'll think of it in a minute, but she, all she was worried about, she always took her coat off, but she always left her hat on, <laughs> and she couldn't find her hat one day when we were going to the uh, theatre, but she was probably so drunk she probably I mean a lady like that being in charge of two young she was in charge of in you. charge of us yes and who, who was your boy babe my boy babe was a girl from the same group of um, juveniles called Jean Bastian I wonder whatever happened to Jean Bastian she was a lovely little talent great acrobatic well lady. maybe Jean Bastian will get in touch with us yeah wouldn't that be yeah. amazing so yeah but good. I was known as Ju of course June then you see I was, I was June Hunt. So you were about Baby June. I was Baby June. The original yes, Baby June. the original June. Baby June. And you did that pantomime with Jimmy, Jewel and, and Ben Morris. I did. And I just loved working with them so much that I then went back with them again, because I was still little, and I went back with them again the following year. And then the third year, the pantomime was going to Edinburgh, and 
they weren't going to be the robbers. And I mean, how stupid was I? I loved working with them so much. And I think because I was away from home, particularly Jimmy Jewell, there was like the father figure and he used to take both of us out on a Sunday. And he was always very cuddly and very really careful, made sure we were happy and we were getting enough to eat and blah, blah, blah. And we were looked after. We were doing our schoolwork properly because we had to have school lessons in the theatre. And he would always come and say he'd check we did our homework. He was fantastic. And I think he sort of took on the like father role to both of us. And I just loved him so much. Um, and it was a comfort being away at that age, you know, from your mum and dad. So did you meet so, uh, Kerry Jewell? Yes. No. No, I didn't because Kerry, Kerry wouldn't have been born then. Right. So Ker Kerry. So Kerry didn't come into the picture because at the time, and Jimmy said said this because you know we sort of it was just a lovely sort of great friendship. And when my mum and dad came up to see me, and I think Jimmy said something like we can't seem to find the blueprint to have a little sprocket. And he said, if ever you're giving baby June away, <laughs> we would welcome her into our family. And I thought that was lovely. Anyway, yeah, apparently they've been trying quite a long time. And apparently, then, apparently, you know, many years later, little Kerry came along. Because Kerry's so, been in touch with us on the website. Oh, um, fantastic. He lives in Australia. Wow. And uh, in this very building where we are now, you and I at this moment, is uh, a set that you may well have worked on. It's the haunted bedroom. Oh, and it from was Babes in from Babes in the Wood. It was made by Jimmy Jewell's father. My God! And uh, it was uh, Kerry got in touch with us when uh, I, I got this set here because a lady rang me up and said that the set they found this old scenery um, just down the road in East London um, in a, a disused hall, and uh, it turned out to be on the back of it was, it was Jimmy Babes in the Wood, made oh, by Jimmy's oh, father. Oh, how and, incredible! Uh, Kerry, you your 15 minute call. Oh, okay. we'll have to jump out. So, yes. so to end that one, um, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy's son Kerry got in touch and said he believed that it had been destroyed about 20 years ago. Oh so, my goodness, yeah. and there it was. And there it is. So Jan, we better get ready for this. So what are we I doing think, today? Uh, we're doing the magnificent music hall. We are indeed. We are, so I have to go on and make myself up as a tramp. All right. And yes, but it's sort of music hall stroke variety really. Um, as some of it is traditional music hall, but do you know, it's it's just there's such a huge audience out there for this sort of thing and variety, and you know I'm so pleased to have the opportunity yeah. to do it and to be at this lovely theatre and to see see lovely you again, yes, long-standing nice friend, to work the together best now. sisters I'll in the business. Tell you what we'll do uh, tomorrow in the next break. Yes. Uh, we can have a little can chat about uh, yes, what happened oh, after baby June. after baby June. So thanks for that, uh, Jan. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back to you tomorrow. Right, darling, thank you. Jan, welcome back. We've just done two shows, haven't we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. They were very and fast. Here, yes, and here we are again, and it's the next day. The next day. It is. Um, now, we were talking, we, we, we got to the career of Baby June. Baby June, and, yes. And after, after you finished being a juvenile, yes. when was your next panto experience? My next panto experience was as a principal dancer in um, Buxton. Um, and I did that for a couple of years. I then joined Lionel Blair as one of his dancers and went up to Scotland and did the five past eight shows and pantomimes. Um, whereas the pantomimes used to last until May and then you'd have like a couple of weeks at home and then the five past eight season would start till November oh, and then you'd start rehearsing. So really it was absolutely fantastic, you know, to, I mean, you were just in work all the time. And, and were you ever a principal girl? I was. I was a, my first principal girl role was Goldilocks um, and that is when I changed from being a natural brunette to a terrible bleached blonde. <laughs> But I never went back. Now, no. is that Goldilocks the famous Goldilocks and Not, Hull? No. no, no, no. This was an earlier Goldilocks. I can't even remember the company I was with, actually. No, it wasn't the Paul Elliott. It wasn't Mr. Elliott, quick genuflect. Um, no, that didn't happen until... That was his very first pantomime in 1969. With the lovely Ronnie Hilton. With the lovely Ronnie Hilton, that's right, mm. yes. So, yes. so you, you played Girl, you played Goldilocks, and when did yes. the first boy come along? Well, I struggled for many years to get to play boy because I've never really been happy. I mean, I was only Girl because I was short. Mm. 
and blonde and you know it was like oh yeah she's principal girl but I always was longing to be that personality the cheeky Aladdin or I sort of always imagine myself being I always think I'm much taller than I am anyway and with high heel boots on I thought yeah I can't but it took me a while to convince even Paul Elliott and I said look Paul I'm not a principal girl Goldilocks was fine but then when I moved on I said please let me do boy so the first time he let me do boy was at Wimbledon uh, in Dick Whittington oh. with the lovely and wonderful Eric Sykes. So, and once I played boy, he said, it's so funny, I never ever saw you as boy, but now I've seen you, you know, he said, I think that's where it's at. So and I proceeded to be Dick Whittington, um, Aladdin... Um, I know, you was Prince Charming. You do, darling. Well, that's why I have to say that's my favourite. Many, I, many Prince Charming. Yes. Where was our first one together? I can't remember. So we did Southampton together, didn't we? We did um, Edinburgh. Uh, Croydon. Croydon we did. Uh, Wimbledon. Wimbledon. Wimbledon, yes, I, many, we've been many, together many times. Prince, Charming. Prince Charming is, I think, my favourite because I love the outfits and I love the grandeur of the ballroom and all that, and you get to sing a nice. So, what's it. your theory on whether boys should play boys or whether girls should play boys? I'm against boys playing boys. You um, wouldn't be. I would, yes, yes, um, because it's a tradition. It's a fantastic tradition pantomime and I think if you're going to do pantomime it should be as we know pantomime there is a magic and I know it comes into question now they say well, well you know why have you got a, a girl playing a boy but why break from tradition that has been successful for so many years you know why change a good thing why change it and I think it creates that magic where now when you get a pop star with all due respect to how wonderful this, some of these pop stars are and when they come out you know they're not there because they're being a true principal boy they're there because they're a pop star and it's going to put bums on seats and, and maybe there's something missing for the daddies as well when a boy plays the part yeah sure because daddies like a little bit of eye candy don't they mm. i mean of course they do they're like the principal uh, boys and the dandinis in the short tunics nice boots i mean and why not you well, know who are the principal boys that you remember well, the very first one, who I longed to be like, but I never could unless they put me on a stretching machine, was Adele Dixon. Oh. Now, that's going back a long, yeah. long time. Um, I mean, she was just so tall, so elegant, and it's the posture, and she even made herself taller than she was, and I think that's, as I say, even me only being five, two and a half, I learned how to stretch and make myself look taller on stage, and it really came from her. I thought she was fantastic. Joan Dowling was a wonderful sort of cheeky Aladdin type of character. Um, just trying to think. Did um, you ever get to see the legendary? Evie Cott. Oh, right. Evie yes. Cott, another name from the past. Did you see the course, legendary Dorothy Ward? Dorothy Ward, yes, yes. And, and, of course, with boys, you get longevity as well. Yes. Because boys can yeah. keep going, and girls, of course, Yes. girls don't, but the yeah. girls... So. And the dame, there's such a great novelty in a guy playing dame, you know, and it's, you know, when he does the undressing bit, he's got all the knickers on and the padlock. It's, it's just tradition. Why break? I get so cross. Why break with tradition? You know, I remember going to see a pantomime a couple of years ago, and I won't mention any names because I'll make myself very unpopular, and the dancers came out in combat trousers and trainers. Well, I'm sorry, I never opened my storybook and saw villagers in this outfit. And why, why try and modernise something? It's the magic of show business. Pantomime is opening a storybook that the kids have had read to them at night. Do you know what I mean? And that magic should still be there. And uh, But you've not just brought pantomime to uh, theatre, have you? Because I, I can uh, well remember the, the Cracker Jack annual. Oh, with the oh, Cracker that's Jack right. pantomime. That's right, which obviously televised, so yes. When, when well, was your first Cracker Jack pantomime? Well, 74. I think it was 70. I'm terrible on dates, as you've obviously gathered, Nigel. Um, and I had just auditioned for Cracker Jack. I'd been told I'd got the part, and Robin Nash, who was directing and producing then, said, Jan, I said, well, you know, you're obviously I'll get a schedule. He said, no, in actual fact, we're reading through the pantomime, so we will now go to the rehearsal room. Ah. So going in without a job, but knowing I was on the shortlist, not only did I end up with being in the series, he was my first pantomime. Uh, okay. So that was Aladdin That's with Aladdin. Dana, and that was fantastic. And then the second one was Robinson Crusoe, with, of course, Ed Stupot, who had now joined with me. Uh, Don McLean, Peter Glaze... 
Uh, and I mean, it was just fantastic. And then I did another BBC. I did Peter Pan for the BBC. That, that was when I was doing the Basil Brush series. And so was Peter so, Pan their, their sort of Christmas pantomime? Christmas pantomime, with, yes. Because we yes. all remember them, those wonderful yeah. pantomimes. Weren't they fantastic? Now, why did they ever stop those? Oh, money, uh, younger yeah. producers coming in with, you know, and I'm not knocking their ideas, but certain shows, it's like the good old days, okay, getting a little bit back to what I do now. Why take off a series that was so successful? There's a huge audience out there for a good old Saturday night music called Variety, and then people say, oh, well, it ran for 30 years, so well, how long has Coronation Street been running? But there's quite a and crossover, isn't there, between music hall, a variety pantomime? Yes. Because in this show alone, I think you've got, have we got three dames in this show of yours? I think we probably have, because we've got Ian Adams, Peter John, Peter John, and myself, and your good soul. So we've got yes. three dames yes. in the show. Yes, three dames. Yes, a principal yes, a boy. Yes, a principal boy, yes. Uh, Lorna Dallas, Lorna principal Dallas. girl. Uh, yes. Now, yes. of course, Lorna Dallas, who's starring in this show at the moment. Yes. Is your half hour call in your half hour Polyphilatine, maybe Nigel. Yes, it's time to get Lorna Dallas uh, was, in fact, in showboat with you. She was. That's where I first met her, because um, uh, the, it was uh, wanted that the cast, they wanted it to be an international cast. So Andre Jobin came from France, um, Lorna flew over from America, and I was a little bit cross at the time. Um, because, I mean, I'd worked for two years in Australia and the press was, oh, Jan Hunt from uh, Australia is playing any May because he wants to round it all off because we had a couple of people from the UK. So, and I got very cross about that because I'm very proud of being British. But anyway, I didn't worry because I was in the West End in a big musical playing a lovely part. And fabulous musical it was, I saw it. it oh, did you? It and was uh, a good one. Uh, yes, so she came in. And she came over for that. And it's all going full circle. It is, um, yes. And that's, so that's where I met her. We worked for two and a half years together. We did Friday, many Friday nights music nights. And I approached Lorna last year and I said, she'd been to see a few of the shows I do now. And um, I approached her and I said, would you ever consider, you know, being on the bill? And she said, I would absolutely love to. So here we are sort of working together again, lucky. which is great. I'm very lucky to have her. She is just superb. So just before you go and um, apply your, your <laughs> makeup, um, it's a career that spanned from, from baby June, from, from juvenile. At the age, from the age of 11. And through, I'm not going to give you the other end of the scale. <laughs> through, you've done principal girl. Done principal boy principal and of boy. course fairy. Oh fairy. Well when you start getting into the older sort oh. of bracket, don't you? Then you become a character fairy. I couldn't play a straight one, you know, as to have a bit of um I, I can of... remember a very exciting day at Wimbledon when we had uh we had two fairies. We did. Jude Whitfield. Jude Whitfield was yes. the fairy on the on the That's right. Friday night. Yes. And, and Miss Jan I was fairy, yes, because she was off doing um, Ad Fab. Ad Fab, that's right, and so, uh, so I was covering her and that. And I've never amazing. forgotten standing the wings watching how seamlessly you just slipped straight oh, in. You didn't have any rehearsal. No, I didn't. You I didn't. could, I mean, obviously I had the, the script given to me and I went through the song with the MD, but none of the company, I think, apart from your yeah. good selves, and I thought, well, everybody had run through with me, and they went, oh, no, you, you're experienced enough. You know so the first time I saw some of them was actually on stage. Yeah, not even saying good morning, no, hello, they... No, there they were, you know. That was a no, very that exciting. Was it wasn't was an exciting was day. Yes, and then in um, Sleeping Beauty, I played this sort of nurse. So that was a sort of touching on a dame-type character. That, that I enjoyed. That was a lovely theatre in Bath. Um, and then, yes, and good fairy character fairy, really. And, uh, Did you ever play pantomime abroad? Yes, because Paul took pantomime out to Canada, so we took Dick Whittington out into Toronto. And was that with Lionel Blair? No, that no, was... no, that was, uh, it was Paul Elliott's pantomime. And they were big Lionel, theater, they were, they? Oh, it was fantastic, the, the Alexander Theatre, I mean, it was wonderful. No, I think Lionel worked a lot for Paul, then I think Lionel... I think Lionel then took over a couple of productions of his own, but I was with the Paul Elliott set up. Yes, yeah, so we did that. So also what are your thoughts? Wine. Before we finish, what are your thoughts on the future of pantomime? What's, what's going to happen to it? Well, I hope that there are enough of us keeping the tradition alive. 
you know, because people will still go to the pantomime. You do not need names in pantomime because it's, you know, still a family outing. Boxing Day, you know, having the big Christmas meal, you know, finishing off the leftovers, Boxing Day, pantomime. You can take all members of the family, your grandmas, the littlies, the oldies. Um, it's a worry. It's a worry because obviously it was being phased out slowly, wasn't it? And people saying, oh no, you know, it's not happening anymore. I do hope there are enough of us like you and, you know, I mean, you and Peter are just fantastic. Um, and in my book, to the best. Oh. Um, and I'm not just saying that because you're here, because I'm in your theatre now. Here's the money. Uh, yes, Here's thank the money. you. No, we've got to keep it alive, um, Nigel. We have to. It's like keeping music hall alive. We have to hang on, and I think there probably are enough. And funny enough, I think it did a bit of a trend. It took a dip, uh, you know, and it was sort of you, people were doing other things at Christmas time. Now I think it's coming back a little bit. And I, and I just hope it, it does stay with us forever because we should never lose fantastic tradition like that. Well, uh, thank you for all um, for all your thoughts on the pantomime and indeed for keeping tradition of not only pantomime but music but all music alive. Hall. Thank you, Jan. We'd better we better go we and better get the makeup on. Yes, right. Thanks ever so much. Thank you, Nigel.